Hi kids, I'm Miss Tierra with the Petersburg Public Library, and today we'll be reading Swimming with Sharks by Heather Lang. Little Jeannie stood on the railing and pressed her face against the mysterious glass tank. Most people saw piercing eyes, rows of sharp teeth, vicious bloodthirsty killers. Not Eugenie Clark. She saw sleek, graceful fish gliding through the water. She longed to be inside the tank on the bottom of the ocean, swimming with the sharks. Every Saturday morning, Jeannie raced into the New York Aquarium and shared her passion with anyone who would listen. Jeannie loved learning about all kinds of fish, but there wasn't much information about sharks. She dreamed someday she'd discover their secrets too. Mama saved her pennies and bought Jeannie her own fish tank. Soon their small apartment overflowed with fish and reptiles. Jeannie wondered, do fish get sick? Do they think? Do they sleep? She observed, she sketched, she took detailed notes. Jeannie dreamed of becoming a fish scientist and exploring the ocean like her hero, William B. Maybe you should take up typing and you could be a secretary to William B., Mama suggested. In the 1930s, few people dared to study the depths of the sea and none were women. Most people didn't think women could be scientists or explorers. I don't want to be anybody's secretary, Jeannie said. Jeannie took every science class she could find in college and got her master's degree in zoology. When a famous, when a famous ichthyologist, a fish scientist, asked her to come to California to be his research assistant and take oceanography classes, she jumped at the chance. The ocean became her classroom. Jeannie collected fish and studied them. She took water samples. She dissected a swell shark to investigate how and why it puffs up. Wearing a face mask, Jeannie explored the underwater world for the first time. Its beauty mesmerized her. Jeannie couldn't wait to dive deeper, stay underwater longer, and maybe even see some sharks. One day on a research trip, Jeannie's professor let her try helmet diving. As she slipped into the cold water, the heavy metal helmet pressed on her shoulders. A line from the helmet attached to an air pump in the boat. Down, down, the kelp welcomed her, waving back and forth with the underwater currents. Down, down, down. She marveled at the fish all around her. Jeannie was finally on the bottom of the ocean. In 1949, the U.S. Navy hired Jeannie to study poisonous fish in the South Seas. One afternoon, while collecting fish underwater, she sensed something behind her. A huge shark. Jeannie froze. The shark swam closer and closer, a few feet away. Then suddenly it turned and dove down, disappearing into the darkness. Jeannie was too excited to be scared. Most people thought sharks were stupid, unpredictable eating machines. Jeannie believed there must be more to these beautiful fish. In 1955, she opened the Cape Hayes Marine Laboratory in Florida. Right away, she built a shark pen next to the dock. No one had studied living sharks in their natural environment before. Jeannie caught hammerheads, black tip sharks, dogfish sharks, lemon sharks, nurse sharks, bull sharks, and tiger sharks. She observed, she sketched, she took detailed notes. The more time Jeannie spent with sharks, the more she knew people were wrong about them. She wondered, could sharks be trained? In no time, Jeannie taught a pair of lemon sharks to press a whiteboard connected to an underwater bell, then swim to another spot to catch their reward. The female shark discovered if she let the male press the target, she could gobble up the food before he got there. Even after a 10 week break, the sharks remembered the drill right away. Scientists all over the world admired Jeannie's research and came to work with the shark lady at her lab. As diving equipment improved, Jeannie dove deeper. 
She spent longer periods of time underwater and uncovered more secrets about sharks. Jeannie studied the mating frenzy of the gray reef shark. She researched an undersea hatchery for the Japanese swell shark. She swam with a dogfish shark as small as a pencil and a whale shark as big as a bus. Jeannie knew the more she discovered about sharks, the less people would fear them. When she heard there might be sleeping sharks in Mexico, she had to investigate. Scientists thought sharks had to be swimming to keep oxygen flowing through their mouths and over their gills. She wondered, why would a shark lie still? Down, 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 she swam into the shark's cave. Suddenly, she was face to face with a requiem shark, one of the world's most feared fish. Was the shark really sleeping? Would it feel trapped in the cave and attack? Jeannie stared at the shark's sharp, biting teeth and the four rows of extra teeth behind them. The shark's mouth opened and closed, opened and closed, pumping oxygen over its gills. A remora fish cleaned the shark, nibbling on parasites and wiggling in and out of its gills. As Jeannie swam toward the shark, it followed her with its eyes. This shark was not sleeping, but it did not attack. She took water samples and tested rocks and water currents. She observed, she sketched, she took detailed notes. Jeannie discovered the water in the caves was less salty, loosening parasites on the shark and making cleaning easier for the remoras. These underwater caves were cleaning stations for sharks. The more time Jeannie spent underwater, the fewer sharks she saw. People killed them out of fear. People killed them for their fins. People killed them thinking it would make beaches safer. Sharks had ruled the oceans for more than 400 million years, and now they were in serious danger. Jeannie's research proved that sharks were not voracious killers. She knew most sharks should be more afraid of us than we are of them. Jeannie spoke out to the world. Sharks are magnificent and misunderstood. When Jeannie talked, people listened. Dr. Eugenie Clark had become one of the most respected fish scientists in the world. And after her decades of research and discoveries, Jeannie knew there are lots of things, big things, that we don't know about. There will always be more to learn, always more surprises. She never stopped pressing her face against the glass and wondering. Thank you for joining us for Reading Rhyme Time with the Petersburg Public Library.